Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. Today I thought I'd answer a question from the forum about the theory of normal backwardation. It's a good question. It's come up often. And the challenge here with this idea is that we don't expect the forward price of a commodity to equal the expected future spot price. Maybe at first intuitively we do, but the theory of normal backwardation tells us that generally the forward price ought to be lower than the expected future spot price. And here's the key formula where you can see the forward price is the expected future spot price, but multiplied here by this exponent of a risk premium, the difference between the risk-free rate and the discount rate. And so what we say is the forward price is a biased estimate of this expected future spot price based on the risk premium. So let me show you what we mean with an example. The key premise to this theory of normal backwardation, which is just one theory, is that on average, hedgers in the market will be taking short positions in forward contracts. Why is that? Well, if we think about the producer of a commodity, like a corn farmer, for example, they plan to sell that commodity in the future and their concern is that the spot price in the future will drop. So their primary concern, if they're planning to sell the commodity, is to hedge that price risk. And they would do that by taking a short position in the forward. So the motivation here of the hedger is to mitigate the price risk. And they would enter into a trade on average with speculators. So they need speculators to take long forward positions and their motives are a little simpler. It's just to make money. So that's the key premise. That this is generally on average what the market participants are doing. That these hedgers naturally, are as they plan to sell commodities in the future, need to take short forward positions. So to illustrate this, I've got an assumption here for a hypothetical commodity spot price of $10 today. So that's the cash market. And then let's just to say we observe as part of the forward curve the forward price of that commodity in one year is $10.41. So that's what we observe today. We can enter into a futures contract to either buy or sell that commodity in one year at $10.41. And so, by the way, you'll notice this forward price is higher than the spot price. So this is an upward sloping curve, and we can call that contango. The forward price is higher than the spot price. Both of those we observe today as part of the forward curve. We do not observe the expected future spot price. That's what, if we go back here to today, that's what we expect the spot price to be in a year, but we don't know that today. We have to wait a year to see what the spot price will be. So that's the difference between the forward price, which is observed, we can enter in a contract today for that, and what we expect the spot price to be in a year. And you'll notice my numbers, here, they're not the same. My numbers reflect here a theory of normal backwardation where the forward price is lower than the expected future spot price. Why would that be? Well, let me look at my assumptions real briefly. Spot price of $10, I'm gonna assume a riskless rate of 4% one period time so we don't have to deal with that dimension. And then I'm gonna apply the capital asset pricing model to the commodity, keep it real simple. Let's assume an equity risk premium, that's the excess return on the market of 6%, and then a commodity beta of 0.5. So all I mean by that is that this commodity has positive systemic risk or positive risk with the correlation. If this commodity were an investment asset, we would absolutely expect it to have positive correlation with the market. Now the commodity discount rate then just applies the capital asset pricing model. The riskless rate of 4% plus beta times the risk premium of 6% is 4% plus 3%. So our commodity discount rate is 7% as higher than the riskless rate. Just reflects the idea here that this commodity has risk. It's not risk free. Now let's compute the expected future spot price. Very simple. And again, I'm using the continuous compounding in hold. Keeps the math pretty simple. The expected future spot price is gonna be our $10, and then we're gonna continuously compound, so that's an exponential, or E raised to the 7% discount rate times one year. So if we take the $10 spot, 
and continuously compound at 7% over one year, we get $10.73. So that's my expected future spot price. It reflects the risk in the commodity. Now, if you've been working in the John Hall, you know that the implied forward uses instead the riskless rate. So similar here, the $10 spot, but our the forward price we would expect to be a function here of the riskless rate, 4%. So in this case, $10 continuously compounded at 4% over one year equals $10.41, which I've also shown here. So now let's just look at this from the perspective of the speculator. And again, the theory of normal backwardation starts with the idea that the hedgers on average need to be short forwards. It need to be on average short forward contracts. So if that's true, they need to trade with on average speculators who the long the forward. If we put ourselves in the shoes of the long forward, then here today with spot of 10, what would entice us to take a long position in a forward contract if our only motivation is to make money? Well, if we expect the future spot price to be $10.73, could I get you to enter into a long position on a forward contract where the delivery price was $10.73? Probably I could not because that means your expected profit is zero and I'm asking you to assume risk as evidenced by this beta, positive systemic risk. How can I ask you to assume risk and yet expect a zero profit? A zero profit because if the forward price is 10.73, then you're going to pay that in order to receive a commodity that's also worth 10.73. Zero profit, you will have taken zero profit um, in return for assuming risk. You don't like that deal. In order for me to entice you to take a long position on the forward, you need an expected profit. So in this case, you agree to purchase the commodity in the future with delivery price of 1041. Let's say the expected spot is realized. Then, 1070, then you will pay 1041 and receive a spot commodity worth $10.73. The difference here is 32 cents. So you go into the long, as the speculator, you go into a long position in the forward contract expecting to profit 32 cents. You know what the delivery price is gonna be. You don't know what the spot will be. You just expect it to be 1073. So you expect your profit to be 32 cents, which is 3% of what it's gonna cost you to pay, to uh, pay, to pay as part of your um, delivery. So that 32 cents profit is the compensation you expect to receive for assuming the positive systemic risk on the underlying commodity. So that's really just the key idea. In order to entice you as a long into a long position on the forward contract, this forward needs to be priced below the expected spot so that you do receive a positive profit in exchange for assuming the risk. And then the next question I think naturally is, doesn't that mean the hedger then, under the expected scenario, loses? Absolutely, the forward is symmetrical. The hedger here is losing 32 cents. After all, could have sold the commodity for 1073, but instead only received 1041. So the hedger loses on the expected scenario. But this goes back to the key premise. The hedger's not in this to make a profit. The hedger enters into the short in order to mitigate or to hedge against the price risk. So the hedger is okay to accept a modest expected loss because he or she is locking in some protection on the downside. So that's the basic deal. If we go over here, the risk premium is 3%. That's just the discount minus the riskless rate of 3%. And then we can say, then we can express the spot function just by re re rearranging this. We can express the expected future spot price as a function of the forward price. So it's the forward price multiplied by E raised to the risk premium. So that's really all we have here. The forward price multiplied by the risk premium equals the expected future spot price. And so that's another way to say it. 
the expected future spot price is a function of the risk premium. And just to finally put a cap on that, if we said for some reason the commodity had zero risk, and we put in a beta here of zero, now the commodity is riskless. Now the speculator does not deserve any profit, after all, for taking a riskless position. And under that scenario, where the commodity has zero systemic risk, then, and only then, do we expect, because the risk premium is zero, the expected future spot price to equal the observed forward price. So I hope this was helpful. This is David Harper, The Bonnock Turtle. Thank you.